having some alone time. We are actually, uh, but it's it's. I brought you something special. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. By the way, welcome to Beer America TV. <laughs> I'm Paul Leone. Howdy ho. I'm John, John Bigerton. Bigerton. There you go. And um, I bought uh, when I was I went out to Idaho uh, for a shoot and um, was looking for some beers out there on the shelf, and I found this beer called Moose Drool on there, and I thought, well, this is interesting. Had a good name. Probably tastes a bit like Moose Drool. You know, I, I totally bought it as a joke, you know, thinking, I've got to try this, it's named Moose Drool. And, um, and you know, you see they got the, uh, the, moose, the, moose, uh, the moose there in the river and uh, all that stuff going on there. So I thought, well, this can't be good. I drank a lot of it while I was going that week. It was right excellent. It was, it was really good. I mean, I really enjoyed this beer. And, of course, we can't get it here in Georgia. So the five folks at Big Sky Brewing sent it to us. Right and they sent us very special drinking glasses as well for this beer. So that's because, pretty uh, Yeah, they had these made, and uh, because obviously, and, and you know, we've heard this from a lot of brewers, right? The shape of the glass really helps with the beer itself, right? Indeed. I mean, you know, so uh, let me, in a can too, by the way, I, all, all the ones that I drank were out of the bottle, but they sent us some cans, which is uh, like we, we've had some cans in the past, not many, but you're, you're seeing more of this, right? Seeing a little bit more of this. Uh, you know, we've talked about doing uh, production brewery and had more than a few people mention the, the whole idea that we might should consider canning, and uh, I'm still sort of scared just in terms of the whole customer perception thing. Uh, I feel Why? like I, Because you feel like there's that stereotype. Not that it, the beer doesn't taste any different than if it was in a bottle, right? I mean... Well, technically, I mean, what they found, statistically speaking, uh, there's a consumer preference for a beer that comes out of a can in blind tastings. Really? Um, and that's usually attributed to the the fact that it's it's actually a better package. Um, mm -hmm. They typically can get the beer in the package with lower airs, um, or air content as we call it, um, and it's completely light protected. You know, there's that's even a, even a brown bottle is not 100% light protected. Um, so yeah, it's a good way to it's a good way to package beer. And, and for somebody who my age, uh, you're a little younger than I am. Um, and, and I would say maybe people in their 30s, it might, might remind them of the, the way their fathers used to drink beer every now and again, you know, in a can or whatever. I'm a little sentimental value there a little bit. Well, I, I don't know. Personally, I think there's a great aesthetic yeah. to drinking out of a can. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know we're in the crappier business and we should drink out of glasses, but sometimes, I mean, there's just something really satisfying about having an ice cold can in your hand. Yeah. That well, sound, you know. Well, Right, the sound. I mean, that was, you know, usually we're like, you know, with the, 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 the bottle and, you know, the cap coming off, and that's kind of a new... Pavlovian response. <laughs> yeah, right. So tell me what you think of the smell of this. I'm, I'm, right, I haven't had right this in a while, so I'm really looking forward to drinking this. I've been saving this, and I've been tempted. I can't drink it. It's been in my Well, I can already tell why you like it so much. Like it's malty. Big malty nose. That's nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and it's as good as I remember. Um, you know what it reminded me of, and, and um, I sort of was talking to Chris Lady about this before. Uh, it reminded me of Newcastle Brown, oh. but a little bit more flavor. See, and he said you were going to do just that. He no. said you were going to do just no. that. No? No. The smooth, no. You know what? It's the smoothness quality. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. This has more flavor, by the way. Uh, this has a lot more flavor, yeah. and it actually is something that I can put in my mouth and swallow. Really? You don't like it that much? All right. Oh. Well, we can talk about this later on camera. I just, before I got into this whole craft beer thing, that was like my beer when I would go out. And, uh, Dookie Brown Ale? Dookie Brown Ale. All right. Well, you know what? We're going to stop talking about that. And, <laughs> all right. We're going to move on. But anyway, I think my point was <laughs> that this is a, a really great smooth brown ale. But this is this, I said a this, very nice. Moose uh, Drool is, is very excellent. Nice. And see, you, see, I can be, I can be openly uh, critical to... Right. Beers because you're not the on the seas. European Brewers Association. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just—it's it, one of those beers where I feel like it's important to call it like it like it is. Well, and it's incredibly oxidized. Like I've never had a fresh one. I've never been to. Yeah, we're not talking anymore. about this. We're talking about yeah, yeah. Anyways, yes, but sure. but I think it's important to make the distinction because this has a freshness quality. It does. Um, again, not absent of uh, oxidative mm -hmm. papery aromas. Which are uh, often beers like uh, brown ale, anything that's really malty, tends to have a, uh, a propensity to really 
pick up a lot of those kind of papery, mm -hmm. cardboardy kind of flavors when it starts to oxidize. Um, but this is nice. It's, and it, what, the, the thing that really jumps out at me is there's a certain palate softness that this that this beer has. Like once once I swallow, it's just very soft. Um, and I'm not even really sure. I don't even have an answer for that. Yeah, uh, it's it's quite nice. Yeah, it is a really nice beer, and uh, I'm sorry I can't get it here, uh, but uh, it, you can get it in the uh, Midwest. And it, what's funny about it, if you go to the website, they actually have like a lot of moose rule swag, like posters, you know, like a St. Patrick's Day poster, the moose is in all decked out in green. And, I mean, it's a big thing. It's really amazing what you can do with a moose. Yeah, I, well, it's funny. I mean, they, they, they're working <laughs> it up there. So. so thank you for sending me these samples. It's been a long time since I've had this, and uh, it's the only way I can get it now. Is, they send me a sample, and you did. So thank you. <laughs> we really appreciate y'all sending us uh, yeah. all the yeah. all the stuff. Um, the, the beers have been great and um, very impressive. So Moose Rule Brown Ale. If you can get your hands on it, it's really good. It's definitely worth a try. It certainly is worth a try. Uh, Outstanding, malty, nutty, toasty, yeah. caramelly goodness. Big fan of this beer. Really big fan of this beer. So cheers. Oh, and by the way, uh, oh, oh. oh wait a minute before we leave, somebody there's a oh there's a plastic cup coming in. It would be Chris Lady. Corn uh, cup. It's a it's a uh, compostable oh, right. okay. corn-based cup. An eco-friendly cup. Perfect. And uh, what do you think? He's drinking. And by the way, while he's sampling, you hear that washing machine that's going on right now? We're actually in the Moon River uh, uh, brewing area. And what are we hearing? You, you revealed our uh, discrete location. I did. <laughs> what are we hearing? Uh, that is the sound of fermentation. There you go. Uh, so it's not he's not doing his wash in here. It actually... Uh, it's uh, cranking away there. We've got uh, CO2 evolving into a big bucket of sanitizer. Yeah. This is bubbling away. Right next to us, as a matter of fact. So that's what you've been hearing throughout this whole episode. So and probably a lot of the other episodes that are surrounding this one. So there you go. There's the secret. So if you have any questions or comments, it's pink at beeramerica.tv, paul at beeramerica.tv. And also remember to uh, find us on Facebook and uh, friend us up on, uh, I mean, uh, Twitter, as you also can find us there. Our videos are all over the web. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, cheers. Cheers. Ching. Oh, I like this beer. It looks lovely. That is. Well, thanks for the glasses too, sorry. Yeah, one of the best. Okay. Um, Real malty beers. Mm. I think I've had a long time. Really? Yeah. Outstanding. And I don't tend to gravitate towards the just the malty, malty beers. It's, it's, it's lovely. What'd you think? I liked it. it yeah. Good. Sorry, I forgot to come back to you. Oh, yeah. Chris Thanks. Lady, by the way, sorry, uh, was Thanks, back here. Paul. Did you did you stop recording? Right, still recording. No, no, no he's still, still there. Okay, there you. he is. Yeah. Don't worry. Chris that was liked good. it too. It was so. Good. It's great. Right. Cheers again. Boing, boing, boing. Boing.